Hi, in this tutorial video we are going to be covering how to analyze waveforms in PSIM. To do the waveform analysis we will be using SimView, which is PSIM's native waveform analysis software package. To generate some waveforms we're going to use this RC circuit, which is being driven by a square wave voltage source. I've already identified three waveforms of interest. I have the input voltage, I have the voltage across R2, and I have the filtered voltage uh, across the cap. Say let's also be interested in, in the current, I can pull up a current probe from the bottom menu and place it into the circuit. We'll call this I2. Now to analyze the waveforms, we just need to hit run simulation and right away after the simulation is finished we can choose which waveforms to look at. To start with let's look at the input and the filtered waveforms. We can add them to the display. Let's maximize this. Say though we actually had wanted to look at V filtered and VN by themselves in separate display windows. To do that we can just go back up to the add curves or remove curves button remove the filtered and then add a new display with filtered in it. Again that was with the add display button. Now we have both waveforms on two separate displays. Let's do some measurements. So in the measure menu I can now left click anywhere on the waveform and we get an instantaneous measurement of the voltage at that particular moment in time and it gets updated as we drag it across. Say for example we wanted to do a frequency measurement we can just either drag it to the position of interest or left click and then right click wherever we want to get a, a, a measurement. So here we see we get a frequency measurement and then we get delta V measurements on V in and V filtered. So cursor 2 is being subtracted from cursor 1 and we can just keep right clicking wherever we want and it will update and give us a new frequency and new delta V based on our, on our reference. There are some other options that we can do. We can hunt for the global maximum. In this case we are, we've, uh, we're looking for the global max on V filtered which is over here and then we can also find the global minimum which is over at the beginning of the waveform. And then we can track the next maximum or the next minimum or alternate between the two and get a reading of the next max and next min as we go across the waveform. Of course the measure uh, window is giving us updated results. Additionally we can do an average or an RMS or a average of the absolute value of the waveforms. Uh, to do that we just click on the button and the with uh, the information on screen is updated. So in this case it tells us that we're getting an RMS value between this time point and this time point which is actually the data that we have on on screen. If we wanted to only look at a portion of the waveform we would have to zoom in on a specific section and then re-click RMS and that would update these measurements and it would give us the new from and to time points. Clicking back on this redraw button reloads the data and zooms back out again. We can remove waveforms and we can even remove screens. So that was removing the old screen there. Let's add the filtered waveform back to this one and let's do an FFT. But before we do an FFT, I'm not a huge fan of this green color. I'd like to be able to change that and I'd also like to maybe make the fonts a bit bigger. So I'm going to go into the curve screen. I see here that I can choose between VFIN and VFiltered and I can change this color to, to red say and I can also make the line a bit thicker. And if I wanted to add symbols, I could. The screen, let's make the fonts a little bit easier to read by making them a bit bigger. Say we had this to do this for a presentation. We could do that and we can choose to hide the grid or change the grid color, the background and the foreground color as well. 
So now with my new options, let's run an FFT. We see here that all of the information is down at lower frequencies. So it'd be handy to be able to redraw the x-axis in logarithmic scale. To do that, go up to the x, click it, click log, and redraw. And we see that we now have the uh, x-axis in logarithmic. I'm interested to see the y-axis in dB microvolts. To do that, just click on y and hit dB microvolts and it, everything gets rescaled. Now I have some concern that my circuit might not pass EMI standards. To check that, we can go in, uh, we also have the option to plot the angle. We can go in to EMI standards and we can add, say the FCC class A standard to our plot. And we can see how we compare. And I can see here that we're beneath the limits. Again, the global max and subsequent maximums is still available for for use with the measure menu. Going back to the time domain simulation, we can go and do some other interesting mathematical operations. We can say look at the voltage across R2 and we can subtract it by the voltage on the output and we can multiply or add, a, add an offset, say, of one. There are a host of mathematical operations that we can perform on the waveforms. So we can see my new VR2 filtered plus one volt as the green line. That's it for this video. Check back often for more videos, and hopefully you'll be able to use SimView to analyze your waveforms more effectively now.